Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jude. Today is all about soldering. So if you're one of those many people that have struggled with trying to get the technique of soldering, let me show you in a few simple, in a few simple, <laughs> let me show you in a few simple steps how you can have success in soldering. <laughs> I recently did a service call at a church. They asked me to come look at their floor monitors because they weren't working. And this is what I found. That's the speaker jack for the floor monitors. And as you can see, there is no solder on those solder tabs. They just took the conductors, ran them through the hole on those tabs. And then also there were some conductors that were shorting out to the negative from the positive, And that's what was causing the amp to go into protect. Not only that, this is the wrong connector for a speaker jack. They should have used this. This is an unbalanced or a tip and sleeve. This is a balanced tip ring sleeve. So I want to show you just using a couple simple tools and techniques how you can be more confident in soldering and make good mechanical connections. In electricity, a loose mechanical connection is a hot mechanical connection. All the tools that I use in this video will be listed below in the notes. And then remember this, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses Norm Abram. The reason why is you'll be working close with the solder and there's times where a solder will explode and then uh, melted solder can get up in your eye. Believe me, it is not a good feeling. The solder that I'm using has 40% lead, 60% tin. So you wanna make sure that you got a good cross breeze going or you're in a big well ventilated area. When starting to solder, very first thing I do when I turn my soldering iron on is I will tin the tip. Tinning, T-I-N, is just getting solder on the tip. The solder is what we're going to use to help transfer the heat from the iron to the conductor. This tip is now ready to solder. I'm going to take off about a half inch of this outside jacket. I'm using the number 12 gauge notch on these wire strippers. And I'm just cutting halfway, rotating, and then cutting halfway through. And then I will use the cutters to actually pull that tab off, taking care not to cut into that interior insulation. On the positive and negative, I'm going to take off about 3 16 of the insulation. 3 16 right there. And I'm going to tin the tips of those wires. And I'm going to let the solder wick up inside those strands. This solder's melting point is about 375 degrees. In today's demonstration, I'm using the Neutrik NC series XLRs. So now with the wires tinned, I'm going to put solder in the solder pockets. And there's a certain way that I do this. That way I can just get into a habit, into a pattern and get after it. This is pin one, which is the ground. I start with that first. Pin three, which is going to be the negative or the minus. And then pin two is the plus or the positive. Some people will call it the hot. With that solder pocket still warm, I put the conductor inside there. Make sure that it is melted well and then let that flash over. It takes about five seconds. And when I'm soldering this, I need to make sure that I'm not moving the wire around because I'll get a loose or a cold solder joint. Cold solder joint's not gonna show its ugly face immediately, but down the road when oxidation starts to sit in, it will be a very hard problem to diagnose. That's it right there. The 60 watt soldering iron that I'm using heats the tip up to about 700 degrees. So now that I have the male XLR end soldered on, I'm gonna put on the chuck, the bushing, and then the housing. 
When I'm out in the field, here's another tool that I use, just vice grips. Clamp vice grips on and I'll set the vice grips on top of a roll of tape or a box. That way I can have this insert angling down. Now you saw me slide the bushing on after I soldered, but because this end is already terminated, I need to make sure that I slide the bushing on first. Believe me, I've forgotten to, to do this step and everything that you just did, you have to unsolder. On the female side, we'll prep the cable same way, about a half inch of the outer jacket stripped off, about three sixteenths of the interior jacket. Wires get tinned. And again, we're allowing the solder to wick up inside to those strands. The solder melting point is about 375 degrees. Now on the female insert, pins one and two are reversed. So on the male, you saw how I did the red on this side, the positive, this is this was pin two on the male. Now on the female, pin two is on this side. Pin three is still in the middle. So on the female jack, I'm gonna start on the opposite side because I keep it to where the positive conductor is the first one that I solder. That way I get into that rhythm and make sure that I repeat that time and time again. Pin two. Can hold that. You can see it, it's shiny right now and as soon as that goes dull, that metal has uh, hardened. The solder is hardened. Now I'm going to come back here to pin three, put a little bit more solder on the tip. Pin three. And then pin one. So with the bushing already on, we're going to slide the chuck over, key it up, housing, and then lock the bushing in place. That simple. To test your cable, you can take a multimeter and ohm it out. Keeping in the theme of positive is always first. Put it in the positive. And then on this side, pin number two, just like that. Now let me show you how to solder on a quarter inch jack. Quarter inch jack, balanced. It has the same parts that the XLR did. We've got the bushing, the chuck, the insert, and then the housing. First thing that I do is put on the bushing. And then I'm gonna strip off about a half inch again. But on this plug, I need to stagger, stagger the three conductors. So you can see how those three conductors staggered. Still going to strip off about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And you can see sharp wire strippers are so nice. If your wire strippers are dull, you're going to be fighting them and ripping out more insulation than you need. Tin the wires. On this plug, I'm going to do it actually backwards. Still, filled, still filling the solder pockets. You can put too much solder in and you can put not enough solder in. On this plug, 
The hardest one to heat up is going to be the shield because it's such a big soldering area. So I'm going to spend more time on heating that up and I'm going to start with that first. So there is my shield. And then I'm going to make sure that this flashes over well before I start moving it around. If I start moving this conductor around before it has a time to set, then I could get a cold solder joint or a loose solder joint. Now, I can work on the positive or the tip. And the ring. The nice thing about the 700 degree iron, it gets in, heats it up very quickly, and then it gets out. And you can see how <clears throat> that insulation started to melt back. And then I just pulled it forward because it's very pliable. Chuck. Chuck gets lined up. Insert goes through the housing and the bushing gets tightened. So it's that easy right there to solder an XLR or a quarter inch jack. Don't forget to tin the tip of your soldering iron and the tips of your conductors. You get in, you heat up, you get out, you let it cool down. It's that easy. Next time you solder, I hope you'll have more confidence and you'll have a better mechanical connection. Any day that you can solder, it's going to be a good day. I'm Jude and that's my sound advice.